Here in San Francisco, there's a lot of companies that you probably don't ever hear of. They're not Apple or Google, but there's a bunch of companies that help these uh, bigger companies and smaller companies uh, develop the uh, innovations that they need to get ahead. And Cognience is one of those that we're going to uh, talk with right now and see what's going on in the underbelly of the development world, where innovation really comes from. Who are you? So my name is Michael Schrademan. I'm the CEO and the founder uh, of Cognience. Uh, we're a service business of about five years. Um, I am a process improvements guy by, by heart. I am a methodology expert by heart and by, by training. Uh, and I was always uh, interested in making the whole software development process better and more efficient and cater to the best kind of product manager, which is a customer of the software. I am uh, formerly a management consultant. Uh, I spent a lot of time with the big fortune style companies mm -hmm. and primarily helping them revamp their practices to agile, yeah. which was a, a, you know, a pretty mammoth type of uh, task, uh, as you can imagine, lots of job security issues when the whole Scrum and Agile hit, and uh, we founded uh, Cognience as actually a, a new incarnation of a startup that we had before, which was a classic venture-funded yep. uh, gig. Uh, we stumbled on something that we thought was worth considering, and that something was, you know, how do you create a service? to other startups that helps them become more successful, that helps them minimize their risks of development, and how do you scale it in a way that essentially makes the, the, the key people behind the startups focus on what they, they're at best, yep. uh, which is product strategy, and not worry about delivery. And that's, that's what we do. So it's, it's interesting where, where yeah. you came from, because uh, Gartner just had a, is having a conference today, and they just uh, announced that still only uh, a small fraction of the, of the enterprises are ready for these agile um, development methodologies. You know, they, I, I look back at my time at Microsoft and it was a waterfall development methodology, right? Yeah. Somebody writes a spec, then hands it over to this team, and then they you know, goes to this team, and then it goes to this team, and they still wake up team. with nightmares. <laughs> you know, and this is why it takes, yeah. it takes three years to yeah. ship a copy of Windows, right? Yeah. This guy, uh, New Relic, yeah. He, he built a tool for a world where you develop code in, a, in an hour, right? And check it in and see if it works, yeah. right? A, yeah. a little bit different kind of yeah. methodology, right? Exactly. Uh, we were, before the cameras came on, I, I was telling you about Andy uh, Grignon, who uh, was one of the 10 guys who built the iPhone. Yeah. And I've, I've watched him coding at one in the morning after he gets drunk, and he writes beautiful code because he wrote the dashboard in the Macintosh, right? And he ran Palm and he ran uh, HP. Um, but that's a different kind of skill to do that kind of high volume, high output, very innovative, forward thinking work, um, and and do that without much of a team. Yeah. That you know, if you work at a big company like SAP or something, you you have to have a different approach than Andy does, right? Exactly, exactly. You have to have a different approach. You have to have a different process. You have to make sure that uh, your people are empowered from from ideation all the way to product release effectively yeah. and that y they do it in a very iterative and collaborative way uh, it's you know we, we live in the design driven development world yeah uh, we live in the world where you have to adjust very quickly and y you can't just hire a classically trained computer scientist to do that kind of stuff because we often hear of stories of designers doing something that's not readily implementable or engineers pushing back on the design that's been thrown to them and figuring out you know what the heck is that you know how do you how do you do this um, yeah. having a process that does end to end right and where people are not hiding behind project managers or you know key sort of stakeholders of the project but are instead empowered to talk about ideas to research them to to contribute into the specifications, 
to work side by side with designers. This is the kind of stuff you ideally you want to have on the team. And many companies in the outsourcing world are actually moving that way. For example, we all heard of you know Frog Design. Yeah. Not many people actually know that Frog is a is an Arisent company. So it's owned by a classic uh, systems integrator out of India, right? Not many people heard that you know Method Design right here in San Francisco has been acquired by Global Logic of India. Uh, you know, recent more recently Accenture, Fjord. Um, the problem is that you know it's not something that you could just sort of swallow in yeah. and 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 sort of create a synergy by doing that, right? In fact, yeah. uh, the whole Frog, uh, frog Arisent is not working out. It's being, sp it's being spun out again. Yeah. Uh, no, because, uh, you know, I can see uh, yeah. the, the people who originally worked at Frog are the people who go to Burning Man and yeah, are yeah. creative and are innovative exactly. and love coming up with ideas and shipping them in yeah. one evening. And they don't like working for some company that's like, of building a call center for Verizon, you know, exactly. it, it, it's a culture. They don't mission. even like to have their logos on their decks, right? Yep. They view this as as a less cool kind of more even a, of a liability type of thing, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so in reality, what happened in the last three plus four years, almost of Frog Arison, is that Frog continued to chase the high end design engagements, while Arison was doing their classic systems integration work in the telecom space. Just you know, two plus two equal three almost, <clears throat> but not five. <clears throat> we came out of a startup where we actually had a chance to start with a clean slate and fill all these pieces of the puzzle from day one. Got it. So we had product managers working under, under the same roof with designers, both on the UX and creative side, engineers, quality assurance, and network operations. So essentially a, a, a full cycle are you competing with Zurb then? Because Zurb built some of the apps that are famous today. I, uh, whether they built the Twitter app, I, I, don't, I don't remember. I but think they built a lot of apps. Are, are you doing that same kind of work? We're doing to... similar kind of work. Mm -hmm. We would be more comparable to Pivotal Labs if we were to compare ourselves to someone who, you know, who is right here local that could do that kind of work as yeah. a service. Uh, the challenge, of course, you know, if you're a Pivotal Labs company, you know, which is now AMC, how do you retain and attract the best people while you know those people are still entertaining offers from Facebooks and yep. and Googles and and Rackspace <laughs> and Rackspace exactly uh, I know we have a bunch of engineers upstairs and we're hiring a lot more and we can't find them either exactly and yep. and this is what you know we work with Park uh, which which is quite famous in the whole innovation space as a corporate innovation space. We were competing with Pivotal Labs for this engagement, and the reason they told us they chose us ultimately was precisely because of the problem of retaining the best people. They said, you know, they got the response from Pivotal that, you know, we're going to build your version one of the product and we're going to hand it over to you. Yep. And you're going to have to evolve it, you're going to have to maintain it, you're going to have to take it through the, through the you know, turns, um, because this is not our model. Whereas Cogniance actually uses that opportunity to maintain a product that we build. We rarely maintain yeah. stuff that's not built by us. But if we build it, we maintain it, we grow it, we evolve this it. This is key, right? Exactly. And it's a, it's a good way, sorry to interrupt, a good way yeah. for us to actually reshuffle some of the yeah. software teams or product teams because you know, maintaining may, may not require, you know, a CTO or a chief architect or five of seniors. No, it just requires you to, uh, to stay on the bleeding, to keep your product up yeah. where it is, right? Uh, Chase Jarvis used to have this uh, app on the iPhone called Best Camera. Yeah. It was uh, out uh, eight months before Instagram, and it was a great camera app. Yeah. But he hired a company like yours, not yours, um, and they uh, they got famous be because of this app. Yeah. And all those guys left and went to work f for themselves or somewhere else, right? All the, yeah. the all the Objective C developers that worked on this app left, and yeah. you couldn't maintain it. Yeah. And Instagram exactly. comes out Boom. with two guys and kills them. The rest is history, right? Yeah. One's a billionaire yeah. and one's not. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I mean, Chase is doing fine, but he could have been the Instagram, right? If yeah. he had a team that stayed in and just kept it up to date and kept uh, 
you know, if, if, if that team was still working and yeah, rocking. It kept the momentum, right? Momentum, but if they, yeah. if they were rocking and rolling and Instagram came out, they could have adjusted a little bit and then uh, kept Instagram out of the market, right? But no, the team was yeah. in disarray by the time Instagram came out and they couldn't react. Yeah, boom, dead. It, it's, it's, you know, still the biggest risk, you know, being a startup is, is you know, you have higher risks of failure than success by yeah. definition. But within those that are making it, right, product delivery is still the biggest concern for many stakeholders, right? Yeah. Investors, founders, you know, how do I not wake up in the middle of the night thinking, you know, am I going to make that release? Yeah. Or do I have to cut features? Or am I going overboard with my burn, cash burn, right, to, yeah. to achieve the milestones I need to achieve? So we're keenly aware of those considerations because we used to be a venture fund the startup. We understand yeah. these considerations. And in fact, the, the, pressure. The, the reason we converted was actually not, you know, I'd love to say it was completely a revelation that we all had, but it was, uh, it was hinted to us, to us by the uh, uh, venture capitalists that invested in us. They said, you know, for some reason, you guys nailed the whole delivery aspect. We don't talk about it in the board meetings anymore, which usually takes up a lot of the board meeting time, yeah. right? We are able to focus on, you know, the roadmap, so you built the development team of the future, basically. Uh, well, I, I'd like to think, uh, you know, development team of the now, but hopefully capable of scaling into the future given the pressures that the future holds for us. When right? a startup uh, goes off the rails, it, yeah. it often is uh, the co-founders are arguing or, s or there's not a good uh, strategy or the CEO is, is micromanaging, doing something to the team that gets the team totally demoralized and people start leaving because they're like, hey, dude, I can go yeah. over here and yeah. I can go t get Twitter stock, <laughs> you know, yeah. or get Twitter again. I yeah. don't need to deal with your crap, you know. How have you figured out how to deal with these human issues and keep the discipline and keep, you know, people on, on track so that they can innovate and be happy and, you know, feel empowered to, to come up with new ideas? I, I think, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very... Um, sort of delicate question, right? Because your teams Humanism. are all over the world, right? You have our team, team is all over the world. Our, yeah. our key development center is in Ukraine, in Kiev, Ukraine. But yeah. we have offices where you'd expect innovation hubs to, to yeah. be, you know, Berlin, London, Copenhagen, of course, Silicon Valley is our headquarters, Boston. The, in my experience, many of these human issues arise when the problems begin, right? Yeah. So when the founding CTO, for some reason, is not able to deliver what, what he committed to deliver, right? Yeah. Or when someone comes in from the outside and says, well, guess what? You're no longer two guys in the garage. I invested in you, therefore I expect you to hit these milestones or you could be fired, right? You now have someone who could fire you. And this is where things become, you know, emotional and, 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 and more difficult, right? So our sort of claim to fame is that we cover, we get the delivery covered. You know, we sort of, wrap this virtual arm around the shoulder of the CTO or VP of product and we say, don't worry, you know, we're going we're gonna to deliver for you. We're going to help you deliver. Whether it's us doing all the work, which we have some customers where we are completely virtualized to us. Yeah. Companies like CloudMade uh, or more recently Velti, the, uh, the ad technology uh, company. In other cases, it is us augmenting the, the, the brain power that the company already has or the yeah. creative creative power and a lot of it has to do with the, the, the type of process we bring in, right? The process needs to be tailored. There is no two startups that are alike, right? Some of them may be on the left end of the sort of spectrum. Some of them are completely pre-funded. Some of them are series B where, where they need to scale significantly, but yeah. the roadmap's already in place. So being able to tailor the methodology and, and sort of sprinkle the well, right kind of different. talent. That's very different. If Uber needs to open in Moscow, yeah. and needs to localize the app so it works in, in Russian, yeah. that's a different skill than coming up with Uber in the original day, right? Exactly. It's a different, and exactly. you guys can uh, help with that kind of. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, in fact, we cover the, the pretty broad innovation spectrum you know, yeah. from the, you know, some companies that are really, you know, two guys in the garage. We need to have some of those in the mix because, you know, even though they're not ready to commit to 25, you know, person teams, yeah. 
uh, on a full-time basis. Those are the guys that typically have a track record of, of innovation and success, and we want to be there when they do get the funding, right? It, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I, I'm building a little contextual corner here, and Ge yeah. there's a, we're building an incubator, or a, a co-working space here, yeah. uh, called Geekdom, and Estimode is one of the first comp companies. They won TechCrunch Disrupt, a hardware company this yeah. year, yep. and they're off to the races. They make low-energy Bluetooth radios. And it sounds sort of, ah, okay, great, little small startup. But now, uh, the uh, Baseball Association just announced they're going to put Bluetooth radios in all their stadiums. Now, I'm sure the Baseball Association does not have somebody on staff that really understands yeah. low-energy yeah. Bluetooth. And I, my friend Andy is building another company that's going to use build a programming and content tool for these low-energy Bluetooth radios. So. Uh, um, Let's take it into the age of context. There's going to be a lot of stress on uh, existing old big companies, yeah. baseball, Chevrolet, General Motors, you know, because I've talked with them, um, you know, steel health, plants. Health and fitness companies. Health and fitness yeah. companies are yeah. going to need to know data. Yeah. The Ritz Carlton is going to need to know their customer at deep level. Yeah. And they don't have the technical staffs to innovate. They know they, if they read my book, they know they need to innovate. Mm -hmm. They know it's coming. Their competitor's gonna get there soon, if not already, four, you know, four Seasons is already doing a lot of stuff to improve customer service that the Ritz isn't. So the yeah. Ritz is gonna start getting its ass kicked. Because exactly. the best high value customers are gonna start going to the Four Seasons and not mm -hmm. to the Ritz. And so they're gonna sense that pretty soon. And there's gonna be a lot of stress on that company to innovate and keep up. Yeah. and get ahead and yeah. then they need somebody like you that's why i had you on the show right yeah that's why you why you exist right that's why we exist and that's why we because you're doing this with park you're doing it with startups we're doing it with a bunch of automotive companies and uh, in the whole infotainment and connected car space which you know yeah. five years ago we couldn't even imagine you know building an automotive vertical for this company because this, this you know it's notorious for lagging on the whole software side, right? You know, yeah. By the time you release a car, the stuff in the car is already obsolete, right? The processing power is... is no, their, their lead time was eight years. Yeah. I, I met the now guy... it's, I think, five, but yeah, you know, way too Teslas long. And, and, and cloud cars are putting a lot of pressure on, yeah. on those production time. Yeah. I, I met the yeah. guy who, built, who designed the Prius, and he said eight years, and we need to get to... Uh, the General Motors told me they need to get to two or three, you know, yeah. and... and uh, yeah, you know, Tesla is really trying to do this new relic thing, which is, hey, let's ship some new code next Friday. <laughs> you know, let's exactly. push the updates uh, over. Uh, all yeah, the cars, right? you know, like your iPhone, right? Gets. Yeah. Uh, I just updated my uh, my dad's iPhone. It had 34 updates since the last time I had dinner with my dad, which was a, year, a month ago, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so how do you help? Um, how do you hire people? I, mean, I guess that'd be interesting because. You're, you're yeah. finding these people all over the world and innovating. Um, how, how do you make sure that you find the right kind of innovation or yeah. how do you train? How do you make the system it's, work? It's a very, very complex topic, right? Uh, yeah. We all know of some of the best sort of consultancies that people just love to work for. They just yeah. can never say no. McKinsey's of the world, right? Yeah. Even though you know that by coming in, you know, you're going to take care of some very low level work. But you know, McKinsey has some of the most loyal alumni networks in the world. Even people who got fired from McKinsey are still very loyal alumni, right? And the approach is, is the same, right? There's really no magic on the theoretical side because you know, everyone wants to work on interesting stuff. Everyone wants a booster to their resume. <clears throat> so do as much as you can in the shortest period of time. You know, I've been in a management consulting world but you know the traditional outsourcing world is not really giving people that you know yeah. that boost right it's you know it's really no different than offering people to join a company full-time you know on the IT side uh, by explicitly targeting innovation minded clients we are creating this amazing pool through our re recruiting and resourcing funnel yeah to be able to attract the best and the brightest. Our uh, selection criteria are, are, are super stringent. In fact, we just ran some statistics. It's easier to get into Harvard than to get a job with Cognians Ukraine. Same thing at Rackspace, by the way. Exactly. I don't because know how Rocky and I stuck in here, but. You don't want the majority, <laughs> right? You want the, the, no. these kind of boutique team. 
here we hire for uh, cultural fit and for uh, yeah. niceness and customer service exactly. centricity. We, we ask, you know, we, we watch how you deal with people, right? Yeah. And not everybody can be a, a customer service fanatic and that not everybody can do that and code. Exactly. <laughs> and be able to answer a phone and go, hey man, how do I help you to deal with your problem? Exactly. You know? And how do you scale that team? You know, the next challenge, yeah. of course, is, you know, hiring the first 25 people is, you know, you may be able to, to do that, but how do you actually go from, you know, 300 people to 1500 people, which in my world, you know, consultancies, the value of consulting organizations comes come from scale, right? Yeah. We do not, uh, you know, we don't keep any of the intellectual property we create for, for, for clients. It's, it, this, this is all clients. So ours translates almost directly to the number of billable people that we, that we uh, yeah. keep on staff. So this is What's where you the can't sauce that you found then or, or made it is, you know, in, in many cases, it's actually molding people into, into mm -hmm. those kinds of kinds of roles and, and, and into that DNA that involves very strong relationships with the educational community. In some cases, it actually uh, involves lobbying the government for more attention to, you know, building kind of these Silicon Valley wannabes regions. Yeah. So, for example, we are part of the this co competitive concern of companies in Ukraine that are talking to the government, yeah. the Ukrainian government, about building a techno park which will have its own university, right? Because we need that to 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 fuel our scale. But we also have internal academies, right? We we help people transition from sort of some of the stuff that's becoming more of the legacy territory, you know, C++ yes. uh, into stuff that's, that's the future. So we're actually converting people from, uh, you, know, you know, Java engineers get converted to Android engineers yep. or to latest and greatest J2, J2E framework types of experts, right? The big data experts. To end up there, what, yeah. uh, what are you seeing, what are people asking you to do? What, what kinds of, you know, you have all these really interesting companies. What kinds of trends are you seeing? Uh, and is it contextual stuff where you're being asked to really uh, think ab about databases in a new there's, way? There's, 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 um, it, it's both vertical and horizontal is what we're seeing. And on the vertical side, you know, I, I, I'd like to sit here and predict what the next big industry would be. But, you know, we know, you know, five years ago, we couldn't predict many of the things that we, yeah. we're seeing today. But on the vertical side, we're seeing quite a bit in the, in the whole connected fitness yeah. space. We're seeing a lot of interesting work in the automotive infotainment connected car space. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing quite a bit of stuff in the ad technology space. And that's where yeah. it gets, a, you know, a lot of it gets very contextual, right? And very algorithmic, you know, because the company that has a slight tweak to its algorithm is the winning company in the ad, ad technology space. On the horizontal side, we're seeing, you know, I, I hate to use the term big data. It's been overly abused already, you know, without really being defined very well, I think. But a lot of the stuff that, that sort of touches on the big data, uh, yeah. web and mobile platform stuff you know there's very uh, there's there are fewer things that are just Did mobile. Did you just steal all this stuff from my book because <laughs> you, you're catching I like every on chapter. A few, <laughs> on a few ideas. No actually actually you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and reread it tonight actually I, I, I read por portions of it I think contextual and uh, and sort of wearable stuff is where we're seeing a lot of yeah. traction uh, embedded you know, this is not a very glamorous thing for developers, at least not as, not as of a year ago, but there is a lot of stuff that's happening in the embedded world, you know, yeah. embedded, uh, you know, for any types of devices that are connected. Well, you're seeing all the Arduino yeah. boards and the black Raspberry Pi boards are transforming how people do their work. Like I, I visited uh, yeah. Bose, uh, not Bose, uh, JBL, yeah. Harman Kardon, the mixed speaker, and the, the main engineer had a whole bunch of those things on his desk to yeah. play with different yeah. compression algorithms and prototypes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We gotta go, but uh, okay. where do we find you? So we are at uh, Cognians.com. Yeah. We're headquartered in Menlo Park, right across from Facebook. Yeah. Uh, we've actually been there for eight years. And that, that area, is, you know, I must say, is getting better and better thanks yeah. to Facebook. Palm trees are straighter, the grass is greener. <laughs> uh, but uh, we are uh, 
pretty much where you'd expect to find uh, in innovation hubs and venture ecosystems exist. So check us out on the web. Check out some of the customer stories we have. They're, they're very contextual and, 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 and yep. to a point. No long case studies. You won't find it there. Just links to apps and things that we've built. And you know, I hope to talk to you again soon. Yeah, thank you so Thanks much for much. coming by. Because you're really seeing the innards of the uh, innovation engine that is the tech industry. So yeah. thank you. Thanks. Thank you.